morning everyone. Today we are in the middle of the Idaho desert just south of the INL in a little town called Atomic City. There isn't much out here now but back in the day in the early 50s this little town had great potential. Named after uh, being one of the first towns being powered off of nuclear energy and the history of this little town is just amazing. It's pretty cool. The reason why we're out here is because I have heard that there's actually a lot of really good uh, trail rides out in this desert and I've always wanted to know these trails because if you can learn these trails you can connect everything from St. Anthony to Idle Falls to Blackfoot to Pocatello to Twin Falls to Rupert to Arco but a cool little bit of history about this town it used to be called Midway but back when nuclear energy and nuclear research was uh, coming online Actually, a lot of that being started and developed out in the Idaho desert with EBR-1 being the first nuclear reactor to generate power and give power to a town, the town of Arco. And then shortly after, the reactor SL-1, which powered Atomic City here, because of that nuclear energy powering this town, the town decided to change its name from Midway to Atomic City. But back in 1961, uh, there was a couple series of events that turned this place into all but a ghost town. EBR-1 uh, suffered a minor uh, critical meltdown, and then SL-1 had a critical failure caused by human error. What happened is one of the reactors built too much pressure, popped out of the ground, and actually squished the guy to the ceiling of uh, the reactor housing and killed three people in that accident. When the new highway was built, it bypassed Atomic City, connecting Blackfoot to Arco, where the town's population never reaches above 30 now. But uh, these people do enjoy a really beautiful, quiet desert. They do have their own dirt track, and which is fun about Atomic City is you go down the main street and a lot of people have old race rigs where they go and enjoy the local dirt track right down there. Anyways, bit of cool piece of history. We are here to explore the trails. I'll show you over here. You can probably see in the background, that's Big Southern Butte. Big Southern Butte right now still has a lot of snow. It's probably still shut down, can't get up there. But in between here and Big Southern Butte, right there, is Cedar Butte. And uh, I figured Cedar Butte would be a fun first trip out here to Atomic City to explore and have some fun and start learning it so we can start expanding our riding here in Southeast Idaho. So let's unload and have ourselves a good day. So like always, we got the stock double X's, some of the funnest machines to go explore and just enjoy the trails with. Last time I was here, we came from that side, which is the east, and I'm here to tell you, it was rougher than a stinking corn cob. So I don't know what this is gonna be like. I have my doubts. So yeah, actually dad has been out here before. Uh, Just that one time. On a quick trip coming from that direction. And yeah, the trail was actually very, very rough. But from my understanding, the trails are much better to the west. So I don't know, hopefully we run into better trails. Hopefully uh, we actually enjoy Riding out here. I guess dad's the the test subject as far as if it's if he's convinced. Sounds good to me. Convince me.
Well, we made it to the top of Cedar Butte, and boy, is this absolutely beautiful. There we go, kind of had to duck in out of the wind. This rock's blocking it pretty good. But oh, I tell you, this is a beautiful ride. You can see, you see Atomic City over there. Oh, let's step down one more ledge. You can see the INL site, Tower Butte, Big Southern Butte over there. Uh, you can see everything. I can't wait to see the view off the top of Big Southern Butte, which we'll be able to do sometime. But uh, right behind this mound here is EBR-1, the first nuclear reactor to provide power to a town, which Arco, right through there, was the first town to receive it. Atomic City was powered by SL-1. Atomic City, SL-1 was right over there. I don't think the site of SL-1 is there anymore just because of the events that happened. But, uh, oh, beautiful. The lava flows, but it is just absolutely beautiful up here. Definitely, I'm going to come back here and explore these trails. These trails aren't bad at all. They're a lot of fun. Machines are running good. Kind of scarce on equipment today, so we're doing the best we can for footage. Hope you like it. But this is, this is awesome. And if any of you guys are curious about coming out and riding in this desert, do it. It's fun. Even if it's slow, even if it's fast, I mean, you could rally these trails, of course, be safe, be careful, be courteous, but it's also kid friendly. Climbing this butte was a little iffy, like I'm fine with it, but I know a lot of people who may get nervous over it, but totally worth doing. Even if you can't, don't want to get to this top part, there's right over there, that ridge, you can get onto that ridge. Anyone could do it. That wasn't so bad, was it? No, this is awesome. This is amazing. Here I lived all my life over here across the valley over by the Snake River, knowing that the desert existed, obviously because of the nuclear site and all that and the buttes. But I have never, I've never come out here. I can't believe it. Here I am this age and I'm, this is my first time. This is, I can't wait to bring my family, bring my kids, grandkids. And I know my wife would just love coming up here. She's. She's, uh, she's kind of fun because she's all game for stuff like this. There's the train track, which they don't really use anymore, but you can see that running through the desert, heading towards Arco, I think, probably maybe out to the side, I don't know. When you're driving through this desert, you're always focused on Tower Butte and Southern Butte. No one ever looks at Cedar Butte. You, you think, oh, that's just a little molehill. You get on top of it and it's amazing how what height can do versus from the valley looking up to the height, but up from the top, just so much yeah. view at, you can see here. Look at this. Yeah. That's really interest lab, interesting lava formation here. I mean, that's not your typical basalt lava. I don't know why it's so cindery, but it, or it just probably, volcanic cinder. Probably. It probably came up from the ground and pushed up all the dirt that was here. Unfortunately, the filming four-wheeler blew a belt, and so we decided that we're just going to pull it off the road, put it in the brush, and everyone jump into the double X's, and we're going to do a quick run around Big Southern Butte to see what we can see. <laughs>
make it very high. Well, not for a double X. We made it back to Atomic City or the Atomic City Trails parking lot and it's hard to believe that we were all the way out to those buttes over there. Let's try to block this wind. Hopefully the hopefully the wind is not bogging you guys. Uh, anyways, so as we were coming off of uh, Cedar Butte, uh, this machine actually, this uh, film, this I use this four-wheeler, this Renegade kind of for a, a film chase rig uh, to get to places and do videos. Anyways, it blew a belt. And so we left it at an intersection, uh, kind of in the brush. And then we all jumped into the double X's and we jetted really quickly over to uh, the big Southern Butte and uh, went around it. Oh man, I think we, uh, I think we went like 15 miles in like, I don't know, 30 minutes. We were cooking, we were cooking really fast. And yeah, we ran into a lot of snow up on the big Southern Butte, so it uh it's not accessible yet obviously in the video you saw we could only go so far so we'll go back to big southern butte here when the snow melts in a month or so maybe two months i don't know would you come back hmm. <laughs> if i didn't want to have any fun i would yeah no <laughs> yes i'll come back i just won't go that way no <laughs> okay <laughs> to get to atomic city from the east yes it's actually quite horrid it's it's brutal but everything to the west of Atomic City, that was pretty fun. That was too much fun. Yeah. It's almost a sin. Definitely coming back. <laughs> machine's brand good. Your machine's dirty. I know how much you like to wipe it with a diaper. You know what? Here's the thing. If I can go out for a ride that's longer than two hours, then it's worth it because it'll take me two hours to clean this. So if I go out for a full day, Two hours is nothing, so I don't mind. Isn't that crazy how you can just barely get off the floor of the desert and you can just oh, see yeah. everything? Yeah, we were standing up there talking. It's just amazing, just that elevation. How far you can see. Well, you guys, if anyone's ever interested in coming out and exploring Southeast Desert, south of the INL and between Pocatello, Blackfoot, Arco, all those areas, all connect, it's awesome. It's pretty amazing. Then. Go check out Atomic City Trails and uh, and the Yellowstone Divide Trails website. And he provides a pretty good parking, safe parking place out here, which he's developing more and more every year. And it's actually a fun group to be a part of. And uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Well, when traveling in side-by-sides, you always wanna have a good cage. You always wanna have your helmet. You always wanna have good harnesses. Sometimes though, when you're dealing with four point harnesses, especially ones that separate from the shoulders and the laps, they get a little burdensome. Especially if you have like a stock KRX, a stock Razor, a stock YXZ. A lot of those stock seats don't have these little uh, strap windows in there. And a lot of times they'll just slide off the shoulders and fall down underneath the seat, behind the seat, get stuck, tangled and everything. And uh, that's why actually Hillbro has created its first patented product called the Hillbro Fastener.
to hold them away. Here, I'll show you. Actually, both sides are like that. See that? Like that? Where now I can get in. My straps are exactly where I need them to be. And I buckle them together. And when I'm done, without even looking at, I can just go up here and magnetically hold them aside. Quick and easy, in and out. And uh, all it is is a little part like this. A little housing with a magnet in it, a little adhesive on the back. You take the adhesive off, find the best place to put it, stick it, like that, right there. You got yourself a, a very convenient and cheap way to keep your uh, seatbelts uh, very accessible and very usable and very user-friendly. So if any of these products interest you, if you're into backcountry airplanes, drag racing, side-by-sides, or race cars, a lot of those guys really enjoy these uh, magnet fasteners. Go check out Hillbro at hillbro.com.